Welcome back. Game number two about to get started. And joining me is my buddy Snipe Down. I'm a Dynasty fan, girl, as you know. I heard How you that. doing? You, you heard about yeah, that? Yeah, I'm doing Yeah, I'm well, doing you know, great. here it is. <laughs> All right, we have game number two coming up. Team Slayer on Element. Who do you want to start with? I will give you the pleasure of picking. Uh, I'd like to start with Enable. All right, we're starting with Enable. Let's load the map graphic. Team Slayer on Element, one of the fastest game types on the pro circuit. Snipe down, just give us a kind of an overview of this game type and how your team likes to play it. All right, this game type, Element Slayer, is all about working with your team. You got to control certain areas of the map. Uh, spawns work in this game where if you were to kill in the green, the other team would spawn at yellow. And you really got to have two guys top center to control the top middle of the map. You can put shots on every kind of base. And like right here, they're all on that side of the map. They're all close to their base. And you really got to stay close to your teammates. Like he's probably going to push over, uh, stay with his teammates the whole time. He doesn't want to drift away too far because he's just then just going to get double teamed in. You always want to be in position to have help or help someone else. All right, so basically in a nutshell, if you get all four down, you know exactly where they are going to spawn throughout. Now we like to say that you guys do in the commentary booth. We don't know if it's necessarily it's true. Not, I mean, spawns aren't always 100% guaranteed, but I am pretty, I'm like almost 80% sure of where they're going to spawn every single time after I kill someone. It's almost... Uh, the death zone is pretty much uh, the map, the game Halo Reach moves you as far away from where your last death was. Gotcha. That makes complete sense. I thought I was onto something earlier. But here we go. Status quo is actually down in this game by two kills, but a two kill lead on this match really doesn't mean anything as Goofy's just dominating with the grenade launcher. Are you a grenade launcher kind of guy? I, I leave that to Heinz. I mean, you leave it to Heinz? Yeah, Hines? I leave it to Heinz. Uh, that's his power weapon. I'm, I'm sticking to the sniper rifle. <laughs> I don't need to control all the power weapons. Now, we're, we get the, you have the pleasure of looking at all eight screens on these nice, finely tuned monitors. What are you noticing from the status quo squad since it's right in front of your face? I mean, status quo has always had extremely good teamwork. They always work really well with each other. Uh, sometimes people overcommit, which leads to some hopeless deaths that aren't the right play at the time. But uh, Hill Reach is a very fast game, and so is this map. So you got to make quick decisions and hopefully make the right ones. Twin Savior and the Evil Squad just doing an awesome job at controlling the top middle. Goofy's pushing in on Yellow. He's going to get out of there, wait for his teammates' help, and Crim6 comes on the ultimate flake, weakens another player, but Goofy needs to get out of here. Awesome job from Evil just maintaining this lead throughout, but a three-kill lead, like we said, really isn't anything coming in. Not too this. much in this game type. This game type is all about map control. If a team gets control, you can get 15 kills in one death uh, pretty easily, to be honest, but it... It's really hard to get that full map control, but once you get it, if your team's good enough and you communicate well enough, then you should be able to hold it. All right, ideal setup. Eric, walk us through it. What is the positions on the map that you want if you could have all four dead and everyone in the right position? All right, my perfect setup would be two guys top center watching the spawns. Uh, a guy, the guy's top center will be calling out the spawns uh, where the enemy is spawning at, and then you have a player on your team who you want to be flanking either around the side of the base or on... Uh, under the base and go under, but you need to let him know when the right time is to flank because you don't want him to just rush into three guys and then yeah. get picked off really fast. You need to say when you have someone weak and where they're at, and usually that's my ideal setup. And the last guy can either be putting shots on top center or just roaming around trying to find another spawn. So you're not a fan of the whole swarm of one base, So, and what I mean by no. that is have a guy push in from the side and another one come up underneath the base. Uh, I mean, that's a good push uh, as long as you have two guys top center, but if you don't have two guys top center, then you pretty much just lost control of the map and you basically just have two guys at a base, which is just like spawning at a base with teammates. Gotcha. Words of wisdom from Snipe Down, guys. Top I centers. hope you had your notepad out. Two guys top center is what he wants to do as Ace is getting trapped bottom middle, and he's going to be taken out by a grenade. They have a five kill lead, though, so times the, the winds of change have happened, Snipe Down. Uh, SQ doesn't have too much map control right now, actually. They're, they have two guys, three guys on the bottom of the map. Uh, no one's really top center on their team, which gives the other team an opening to push top center and take map control. Now, if there's one person who would be the spark of evil, who would you give it to? You've played all these guys throughout this entire season. Who, who would you be the spark? The spark of evil? Probably Twin Savior. He's 
a really smart player. He doesn't uh, play too aggressive. He knows when to back off. But you got players like Crimsix and Nated who are all about their shot and all about getting the kills and challenging, and they put themselves in some bad positions sometimes. And but just, also great players. just like that, after the double kill from Goofy, we see a tied game actually. Uh, status quo is up by one kill, but I expect it to be tied soon. And there we go. The camo is in the hands of Nated. Eric, you are one of the sneakiest players with this freaking thing. What do you do with it? Are you looking uh, for the excellent push here and the come behind everyone or what? Not really. Actually, like camo on this map, you really need to, like, a lot of people die with it as soon as they get it because you just kind of burn it if you're weak top center. Uh, it's really hard to get away with it sometimes because both coaches are obviously pointing out exactly the camo's up and it's just a bunch of nades top center. But what I like to do with camo is I like to get the plasma pistol and because the melee system's kind of messed up a little bit in this game. You could be right behind the guy and the assassin is just kind of a melee. So plasma pistol is really good to have a camo because it's like three or four shots with it and no shields. So you can run around with that with camo and not get spotted and just take a bunch of people out of melees. Awesome. Awesome. I am going to use that when I play MLG playlist. Here we go. Status quo is lead is only cut down to one as Nate is going to be putting shots in on Enable. He's going to be taken down. Three kill lead for status quo. And the members of Evo are caught underneath bottom or underneath top middle. That is not good. They now have a four kill lead as Nate is pushing in. If Evo wants to come back from this, they really need to have an organized push and talk about it before they make some moves and get top center control. 47 to 43 as Assault is taking down, who also has 18 kills. Good lord, Assault, you are a monster currently. Crim6 picking up a kill, 47 to 44 is Nate. It's caught at the sticks. This is what I was talking about. It doesn't look like SQ has too much map control right now, and it's going to be all about teamwork and making the right pushes because uh, they just gave an opening to Evil to get back map control, even though the game just ended, but it could have been better played. Potentially, they could have lost that match yeah, is what we were trying to get across. Because Evil could have played that a lot better, and teamwork could have been a lot better, and they could have made a real good push. The harsh criticism of Snipedown. I love it. Keeping it real. <laughs> Status quo takes the lead in that game number two. That is two to zero. Will Evil bounce back? I'm not sure about this. Status quo is looking pretty dominant, but taking a look at the stats here, Assault just doing some damage. Does that surprise you? You play against Assault. That what do you really think of doesn't him? surprise me too much. Assault is a great player. He's super smart, and he's always there to help his teammates out, and he's he knows when to flank, and he knows when to just back off and put shots on people and get away with a uh, sprint. And sprint's very important on that map because there are a lot of players that are actually like really good at sprint. There's some players that don't have the full concept of it and that can affect you on certain maps and fast game types like that. Hmm. Fascinating stuff. Now, I know you have to eat. You have the winner's bracket semis coming up. I will leave you with who you want to start with next. It's going to be capture the flag on Android. Capture the flag on Android. Uh, let's see some native point of view. All right, there you have it, guys. After our commercial break, we will be starting game number three off with Nated. Thanks a lot, man. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Awesome.